Yes, it works in a reciprocal fashion, meaning it has opposite effects, and it does. This guy right here is a very potent activator of PFK. It's a very potent inhibitor of fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, which you may re recall is the corresponding enzyme to PFK in gluconeogenesis. What's that? So the enzyme that, that this thing inhibits is fructose 1,6-bisphosphatase. That's the one that catalyzes the reaction that bypasses PFK. The reciprocal part is it has opposite effects on the two pathways. When it's present, cells are going to be going through glycolysis, but not gluconeogenesis. When it's absent, PFK doesn't work very well, even if, ATP, even if AMP is present. Therefore, PFK shuts down, and F16BPase starts up. So when it's absent, we'll be going through gluconeogenesis. When it's present, we'll be going through glycolysis. Opposite effects based on whether it's present or not present. Reciprocal regulation is a very efficient way of controlling things inside of cells. And we'll see other examples of it when we talk about glycogen metabolism that'll occur in a, in a slightly different way. Does that make sense? Don't confuse this guy with F16BP. It's not the same thing. It looks like it, but it's not the same thing. This guy was only discovered in the 1980s. And the reason it took so long to discover it is it's present in such tiny amounts in cells, it just wasn't recognized as, as an intermediate. It takes very, very little of this material to turn on glycolysis and turn off gluconeogenesis. Very, very tiny amounts. So it's very hard to detect. Yes, Stuart? What's that? Okay, is this only present in the liver? The answer is no. Okay, so you actually have fructose 1,6-bisphosphatase happening in other cells. What's missing in other cells are things like, hexo like, like uh, G6PAs and PEPCK. So controlling fructose 1,6-bisphosphatase is an issue for all cells. Yes, Lynette. It turns on glycolysis by turning on PFK. And then it turns off. Gluconeogenesis by turning off fructose 1,6-bisphosphatase. OK? Yes? So this is the thing I was alluding to earlier. That's correct. OK. Let's see. Um, I'll tell you, we'll do, some, we'll do one cool thing to finish, okay? One cool thing. Students always like this one. This is a real easy one to understand. Cori cycle. Let's imagine that I am out running a race, okay? And I'm running pretty strenuously, so I'm using oxygen in my muscle cells faster than my blood supply can deliver oxygen to them. That can happen pretty readily, especially as you get exercising strenuously. <clears throat> What's going to happen to those muscle cells? Well, they're going to be taking glucose, and they're going to be burning it down to pyruvate, right? And they say, whoa, no oxygen here. What are they going to do when they run out of oxygen? They're going to make lactate, right? So they can regenerate NAD and keep glycolysis going, right? They're going to go through fermentation. These muscle cells make this lactate, and they say, this lactate I can't do anything with. It turns out lactate can't be converted into something else. It has to go back to pyruvate. But that takes oxygen. These cells don't have any oxygen. What's going to happen to lactate concentration if nothing happens? Well, it's going to increase, increase, increase. It's not going to do the cell any good. So the muscle cell kicks lactate out into the bloodstream. It says, I, I don't want it. I don't need it. The lactate travels back to the liver. The liver has plenty of oxygen because the liver is very close to your lungs. In the liver, lactate gets converted back into pyruvate. 
because there's plenty of oxygen. When it gets converted back into pyruvate, what's pyruvate going to be converted into? Because again, there's plenty of oxygen and plenty of energy in your liver. It's going to go to glucose. So the liver's going to convert lactate to pyruvate, pyruvate to glucose, and the liver says, hey, this guy's running. The blood concentration of glucose is low. What am I going to do? I'm going to dump this out into the bloodstream, and guess where that glucose is going to go? To the muscle cells. The muscle cells are going to use that glucose and keep themselves going. This cycle is called the Cori cycle. It was named for a, a husband and wife team that discovered it. And it's a very essential uh, cycle for anybody who's exercise or any organism that's exercising reasonably heavily. In this cycle, your liver is responding to the needs of the body by producing glucose, and it's using the waste of the cells that are using that glucose to make it. It's very, very efficient. It works because the liver is relatively energy rich and the liver is oxygen rich. Muscles which are a long ways away from the lungs aren't so oxygen rich and they have to ferment. Make sense? Okay, that's a good stopping point. Let's stop there and I will see you guys tomorrow. Yes, sir. They would say that you don't produce enough lactic acid to cause the problems that people associate with it. And so they claim that the, that the soreness you feel is actually tearing of muscles, among other things. So, yeah. So this process will stop as soon as, basically as soon as you stop, like if you're running for a half hour and you stop running and you start getting oxygen, right. that's, that's where this process will stop. So once the muscle cells start catching up with oxygen, that's exactly what will happen. That's right. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. I'm now getting it all together, and I understand this completely. Is what you're describing before from the pyruvate back up to glucose? Uh huh. Is that the alanine cycle? Uh, no. 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 So the alanine cycle. The, 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 there's not really a cycle called the alanine cycle, but alanine is involved in the metabolism of pyruvate. Okay. So you could convert alanine into glucose. Okay. by converting it to pyruvate and then pyruvate to glucose. Yeah. But this is not the alanine cycle, no. Okay, so that's not what you were describing before the Cori cycle of the first prior when you were first talking about gluconeogenesis. Well, okay. So, uh, again, I don't use the term alanine cycle. So okay. there's not really a cycle as such. A cycle is circular. So okay. I, so there's there's not any, any cycle to that. But uh, alanine is, if you take the amine off of alanine, you, you create pyruvate. Okay. So that's all this, that happens there. So when your body needs to make glucose, for example, mm -hmm. and you're not eating anything, it's going to it's going to start breaking down proteins and using some of the amino acids to make gl glucose. And one of them it can use is alanine. Okay, that's that's what you're thinking. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Sure.